Hello folks, my name is Lee Townsend and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're taking a look at the Line 6 Pod Go. Now before I jump into this video, I do appreciate that I'm a little bit late to the party with the Pod Go. It's a product that's been around for quite some time and there's loads of videos here on YouTube unboxing this thing and giving initial impressions and overviews and things like that. But I wanted to come on here and give my two cents, having owned this for just a few months really. I've owned it long enough to have done a few gigs with it and got my head around the user interface and the hardware, what the buttons do and all that kind of thing. I should stress as well while I remember that I'm not being paid to make this video. I bought this product with my own money so I can say what I want about it. It's not a sponsored video and I'm not affiliated with Line 6 at all. I just really like the thing and I wanted to come on and give my sort of views on it. And for those of you who know the pod brand and remember the original uh, kidney bean shaped thing back in the late 90s, early 2000s, I've actually got one somewhere, I'm not sure where it is, but um, it was a revolutionary thing when it came out, but it was never really fully adopted as a standard for playing live it was to mess around with in your bedroom really it was even for recording it was very digital sounding and it was never really adopted by those traditional players who wanted the valve amp sound and I'd say it was adopted a little bit more by people that wanted a higher gain thing going on because it did sound very digital and that was what some players were going for, and they kind of adopted it a little bit, but it was never really a live tool, even though you could get the floorboard that connected to it and all that, whatever. But um, that went through a few iterations, and I started to see them more and more on people's floorboards, things like the XT Live, the X3 Live, and especially the HD, the Pod HD stuff, started to become used a little bit more frequently. And then a few years ago... Line 6 released the Helix line of stuff. And I remember when I first saw that stuff on YouTube and things like that, I was blown away by the tone of those things. That was a massive leap. It was such a huge step with regards to the modeling thing. But obviously that came with a price tag and those things are not cheap at all. But they, for all intents and purposes, nailed the tone and feel of the actual valve amp within like 95% of the thing. And obviously, the pros and cons against taking a floorboard as your amp to plug straight into the front of house, as opposed to taking a really heavy big amp with you, um, the 5% most players could kind of live with losing because the portability of the thing was just so great. And PodGo is where Helix meets Pod. Pod and Helix do like a little thing, you know, with each other. And you get Helix tones at pod price. So all the tones that are in the pod go are Helix level tones and they sound amazing. If you've heard of Helix, it's all the same tones. So there's um, less routing flexibility because obviously corners had to be cut somewhere. Also, the build quality of this thing is a little bit more plasticky. I actually own a Line 6 HX Effects as well, which is part of the Helix family, but it doesn't include the amp models. It's just the stomp box models. And the whole thing's made of metal. It's really, really robust and really durable. And I'd say this thing does feel cheaper than the HX Effects, but it's by no means flimsy. It's a really well-built, robust thing. It's just obviously got its... It's sort of um, lower quality materials or whatever. The expression pedal on this thing feels a little bit plasticky. But um, I mean, I'm not expecting it to break at any time soon. And there's also less blocks available per preset in this, which I'll go into when I plug the thing in, which I'm actually going to do now. So let me root this thing up and I'll get back with you. Moments later. So I've got the thing all wired up now and the way I've got this routed just so that you know what you're listening to is I've got the main out going straight into my audio interface. I've got the guitar going into the guitar in input and then I've got the amp out going to a monitor over here so that I can hear myself in the room. But what you're listening to 
is direct from the pod go with no speakers at all. It's just direct into the thing. So something I really like about this, it's uh, not a, a user thing at all, but the, the little nod that Line 6 have done to their their pod history when you switch this thing on, you get the outline of the old kidney bean thing, which I really like that little piece of nostalgia. And uh, as I say, it's a nod to the, the pod's heritage, isn't it? So once this thing boots up, you're greeted with the live view, I'm going to call it, uh, which is four presets displayed in one sort of screen on this beautiful color screen. And they are selectable via these foot switches. So you're on A there, there you've got B, there's D, there's C, and you can go up and down here as well. So D, that goes back to bank number two. So if we go down, back to bank one. And something that I have been told about this before I even bought this thing, I was told by a few friends of mine that I knew that owned these things was that the presets are, I'm talking about factory presets, not user presets. I'll show you the difference now. The factory presets are not the best. And I don't want to sort of say anything against the people who made them because they're very usable for the people who made them, if that makes sense. Obviously, everybody's got a different playing style and everybody's using a different guitar as well. So if the player that made these presets was using a Strat and then you go and plug a Les Paul in, it's not going to sound great, is it? But they've very much dialed that in for their own thing. And I think you should always try to have your own voice when it comes to guitar and stuff. So before I dive into the difference between factory presets and user presets, I'll go over the layout of the thing. Obviously, you've got this expression pedal here, which uh, acts as a volume pedal by default when this green light is on. I don't know if you can see where my feet are there. And then if you push down on the toe, it goes red, that light, and that becomes a wah which is quite a, a nifty little thing, I think. Uh, then you've got a tap and tuner button, so tap tempo, uh, like most delay pedals. Well, any de delay pedal really should have that. And if you hold it down, then you've got the tuner that comes up. You can get out of that there. Uh, you've got a mode button, which takes you between the live view, the, the sort of preset view, and the stomp box view. And this enables you to um, switch in and out separate effects so you can essentially you can use this as a simple pedal board mode if that makes sense as if you had your amp behind you and you just had your pedals in front of you so go out there and obviously these a a b c and d are for the presets and the up and down buttons are for bank up and bank down you've also got the five knobs below the screen there to change different parameters on whichever thing you've got set so whichever block you've got set you can change parameters like volume, drive, bass, middle, treble, that kind of thing. And then you've got all the menu buttons, which are the ones in the middle. And the big knob at the top there is the master volume. So within a preset, actually, first, what I'll do is I will go into the user presets to show you how you sort of start from scratch. So hopefully you can still hear me. I've got another mic down here for when I'm down here changing things. But when you're in this live view, if you press this knob here, you can go between factory presets and user presets. Now, I've got a handful of user presets in here that I've made because I, as I said, I've used this thing live a couple of times. So I've got a preset called Tweed Nelson, which is like my main rig, let's call it. Then I've got a Brick Crunch, which is for like stereophonics, Oasis kind of thing. Not too much overdrive, but enough, enough to have that crunch. An acoustic patch, which I've not actually been able to get the acoustic patch to sound any good because even when I switch my amp and cab blocks off it still sounds very electric like it's it's like an acoustic guitar going into an electric guitar amp so if anybody else by the way has got one of these and they're just watching this video for shits and giggles um, have you figured that out how to use this to just plug an acoustic in and go through the same um, the same input in the front of house because I would love some pointers on that if any anybody's out there that kind of, um, I don't know, knows how this works. Anyway, um, the fourth preset that I've got there is Edge Streets because in one of my bands I play Where the Streets Have No Name by U2 and that requires its own preset. 
So we're going to go up a bank to new preset 2A because I've not put anything in this. This is literally as it comes. So to go into that preset now, if we press this button in, uh, no, sorry, if we press, how do we do this again? I've forgotten. I've forgotten. No, view, you press view. And that takes you into this edit mode, which gives you a good view of the anatomy of a preset. And I'll go over that anatomy now just to show you. Apologies, by the way, about the traffic noise, if you can hear that outside. Uh, I live next to a main road and there's idiots with motorbikes that fly past quite regularly. Um, yeah, so the anatomy of a preset is this signal flow. And the difference, one of the main differences between the Podgo and the Helix stuff is you can only have one sort of signal. I, I, on the Helix stuff, you can split it and have different amps and all that stuff going on. But this is very much a simple setup. So the anatomy of a preset is this. From this side, you've got a volume pedal, which is obviously this is the volume pedal. You can see the position parameter being controlled by the expression pedal. You've got a wah pedal. I should add that the volume pedal and the wah pedal are always, uh, the volume block and the wah block are always volume and wah blocks. You can't change them out to be something else. So as I said before, if you toe down on this, it switches to wah, and then you can see the position on the wah being affected by the expression pedal. But we'll flip that back to volume for the time being. The next block we've got is an empty block. This can be assigned as whatever you want it to be, as can the next block. And then you've got an effects loop next along, which there's an effect send and return on this pedal. So if you've got favorite pedals that you like to use in your, um, in your set that you can't sort of model properly with this thing, that you can't get it how you want it to sound, you can put those into the effects loop and you can also switch that effects loop on and off so you can bring the pedals in and out all in one go if you want. You could have the effects loop always on and then switch the pedals in like individually on your board if you wanted to or you could just leave your other pedals always on and then use the interface in the pod go to bring them in if that makes sense. Um, and then the next block along is going to be your amp block. And this block is always going to be an amp block. It can't be switched out for like a reverb, for example. Um, you can switch the amp block on and off, bring it in and out, but you can't switch it out for something else. The next block along is your cab block. Again, this has to be a cab. It can either be a cab or an impulse response, but it can only be those things. The next block is going to be an EQ. Again, this is always an EQ block. It can't be switched out for anything else. You can choose which EQ it is within the thing, within the, the interface, but it's always going to be an EQ block, that one. And then you've got two more empty blocks at the end, which can be assigned to anything you want them to be. So what we'll do now is we'll build a sort of very, very basic preset with these settings just so that you can see how easy it is to build. And before we do that, obviously having only four essentially four blocks that you can assign to anything you want them to be may seem a little bit limiting, especially if you've looked into other Helix products, but you've got to remember that this isn't a Helix product. It's a pod product. And the difference in price is such that I think the the sort of big Helix, the big boy Helix is uh, pushing two grand, I think. And this thing was 400 euros. So there's obviously some cutbacks, but realistically, when you think about it, in a bar gig or a pub gig, for most musicians that are at my level where we, I play in bars and stuff, I'm not on big stages and things like that, I would go to a gig with a combo and a handful of pedals maybe. And that's literally it. For any one song, I don't need any more than this can offer. And you've got to remember as well that each song that you play, you could have a separate preset for. So essentially you could use any amp for whatever song you're playing. The only thing is you can't switch out that amp mid-song, but who would want to do that anyway? Um, the only drawback i found with it is because you can only have one amp at a time in one preset, um, you can't switch out, you can't have one amp for your clean sound and one amp for your dirty sound. You could have separate presets for those, but there is a little bit of an audio dropout in between presets when you click it 
while the unit loads the new preset up. Um, it's almost fixable with snapshot mode, which I'll go over in a minute, but it's not really. It's the only gripe I've got with the pedal, actually. In fact, now I'm talking about it, I'll go over it now. So if we go over to the amp model and just scroll down a little bit, there's little things like this. This match stick, and it's obviously like a matchless model, has a different model for channel one and channel two. And what that means is when you're using snapshot mode, and snapshot mode is a way of using a pre taking a snapshot of a preset. So you've got a pre your preset pedals and your blocks and your amp and your cab. And you have one snapshot, which is that amp with the volume on X, with the drive on X, the bass, the middle and the treble all set. And then you can have a second snapshot with all of those parameters changed to whatever you want them to be. And that happens instantly with no dropout. But obviously, ideally, if you if, if you take an amp with you, like a, I, I use a Blackstar um, HC Club 40 when I'm playing live, and it has its own foot switch to switch between the two channels. But with this, you're stuck with one channel because you've only got one amp block. And the way this is split in here is each channel has its own block, its own preset. No, not its own preset, its own model. So I can't switch between channel one and channel two within the same preset. Um, so I think that's something that Line 6, if they could fix it, I'd love that. If there could be a, a way of using a separate amp for clean and a separate amp for dirty. But again, that's something that you get with the big brother. The, the, the big Helix stuff can do all that stuff. So it's just one of those limitations. But that's the only one that's a bit of a gripe for me because it's something that I would use. The rest of the stuff on the Helix I don't think I would really need. But anyway... Let's go in and build something up. So I'm going to go with um, an Essex A30, which is like an AC30, Vox AC30 model. And for doing this, I'm going to grab my guitar, actually. And for this, I'm going to use my SE Silver Sky by PRS. And see how that sounds right out of the. There's actually a lot, a lot more drive on that than I expected, so I'm going to drop that back a little bit. feel that you get through this compared to the old pod stuff they're streets apart from each other honestly they're um, unbelievable the difference and I've got this on relatively quiet in the room here because I'm in my living room I don't want to annoy neighbors and also I don't want this mic to pick the sound up too much but um And this video, for all intents and purposes, is just like an overview video. I will do an actual rig build with this at some point because I want to try and use this thing more for my live use, especially with one of my bands. Um, I've got a band called Gecko Blaster, and the variety of music that we're playing, the variety of covers that we're doing is so vast that I want to try to use this so that I've got different, like more versatility, let's say, with my sound and also less gear to carry, which is the main selling point of using a modeler in the first place. So I'm going to add a, a gain stage to that. So I'm going to add a, an overdrive pedal. So I'll go to one of the empty blocks, as I said, and go over there. That first one's empty. So if you press that, you can choose what kind of effect you want. So you've got none, you've got distortion, dynamics, EQ, modulation, delay, reverb, pitch, filter, and a looper, which um, there's a looper in here as well, yeah. Amazing. Anyway, distortion. I'm going to go for a Scream 808, which is, I believe, a tube screamer. So let's see what that sounds. <laughs> Just 
add a little bit more gain. <laughs> So obviously, what I was saying before about snapshots, you could have a snapshot of this. Let me just turn that block off so it's not so noisy. You could have a snapshot of this preset with that distortion block switched off for your clean sound. And then you could have another snapshot with that switched on. But you can also, at the same time, change other parameters as well. So say you've got a verse section that's got just to clean with a little bit of reverb. And then there's a chorus section where the reverb drops out, the distortion pedal comes on, and you've got maybe a bit of phaser or chorus or something on there as well. You can have all of that stuff happen with one click of a switch as a snapshot. So it's really versatile and it saves all that tap dancing stuff along, you know, over all the different pedals and stuff when you've got like a normal pedal board, if that makes sense. I'm tripping over my words a little bit. But um, instead of, yeah, having to tap dance over three different pedals, you can just hit one pedal and that happens. And also, you can change actual parameters within the pedal, which you'd have to bend down and physically do. So it's a lot more versatile than using separate pedals and an amp behind you. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a reverb to the clean sound because... I do like a bit of reverb. So I'm going to put that at the end of the thing here. So go there, uh, go across with that one to reverb. I'm going to add like a, let's go for a 63 spring, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> bit too much bit too much turn the mix down 26 percent sorry about the shoddy playing but um there it goes so you can see how easy it is to create a, a preset here and you can obviously you can go on tweaking and the thing with modeling is you really do need to tweak to get the sound right it's not quite so straightforward as just fiddling with the settings on your amp and it sounds fine you've really got to dial the tones in a little bit more i find with modelers but that's always been the case with modelers and also something that i've forgot to add to this video is that you can switch the order of these so for example say you wanted the say you wanted this your amp to be well you wouldn't want it All right say you wanted the volume to be at the end of your signal chain you can press this action button which picks it up that will move the volume to the end and press it again and it drops it down so you completely get rid of the sound by putting it there i mean most people wouldn't put the volume pedal there Volume is usually at the start, but just as a as a demonstration, you could even put your amp over there if you wanted, you know? So it's just a demonstration. To show you that you can move any of these blocks around. And yeah, there's not really very much else that I wanted to go over in this particular video. So I think I'm going to pretty much leave it there. Before I do, I'll go and show you my other presets that I came up with. Obviously, the fact that I've just gone out of that without saving it means that that's gone now. Everything that I've put in there is gone. So if you are doing this, make sure you keep saving your work a lot. So my Edge Streets sound, I actually made these presets on my PRS Custom 22, so it'll sound different. But... It does have a little bit more attack with the uh, 
the custom 22 because that's got humbucker pickups. But um, yeah, my Brit Crunch patch, for example. <laughs> Again, this was made with humbuckers, but um, so if I press both of these, the preset up and preset down buttons at the same time, you get snapshot mode. So I've got, that's a snapshot. And then that's another snapshot. I think that's more um, noticeable on the Tweed Nelson patch, for, for example. My Tweed Nelson patch doesn't appear to work, so that's always good. That's good. I don't need to ramble anymore. That is the end of this video, but I will be back to talk you through some of my forthcoming presets because I need to make some more for different songs that I've got coming on. So this was just a quick overview of this pedal. Uh, it's not a pedal. A pe calling this a pedal is an insult to what it can do. Um, the capabilities of this thing are insane. As I said, not a, re not a, not a paid review, not a shill. I'm um, just saying what I think about it, but it is phenomenal what it can do. It just takes a little bit of dialing in, that's all. So if you've liked this video and you're interested in guitar and music related content here on YouTube, please don't forget that you can subscribe by hitting the subscribe link down below this video and hit the bell icon so that you get notifications when I upload new videos and leave a like if you've liked it. And if you've got any questions, comment section down below is where to ask the questions or you can join my discord server, which is also linked in the description down below. With all the YouTube stuff out of the way, that's all. I'm off. I've got stuff to do. I'll catch you in the next one. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.